Do you ever get sick and tired of being sick and tired? <laughs> All the time? Uh, it seems like, I don't know, life is uh, a joyful, beautiful thing, and sometimes it can be so, so very hard. And we wonder where we can turn to for help. Well, I once read about a woman who telephoned a friend of hers and asked how she was feeling, and the friend said, Terrible. My head's splitting, and my back and legs are killing me. The house is a mess. The kids are simply driving me crazy. Well, it was at that point, very sympathetically, the caller said, Okay, listen, go lie down. I'll come right over, right over away and cook lunch for you. I'll clean up the house for you. I'll take care of the children for you while you get some rest. And then she says, by the way, how is Sam? Sam? The complaining housewife gasped. I have no husband named Sam. Oh my heavens, exclaimed the first woman. I must have dialed the, the wrong number. And about at that moment, there was an uncomfortable pause, as you could imagine. And then the wearied housewife asked, hopefully, are you still coming over? <laughs> do you ever get tired? You know, do you ever get weary? Naturally, we all do. And many times we may feel a lot like the housewife in our story. And we find ourselves busied with and wrapped up in schedules and agendas and in chores and family, community, church responsibilities. And the list goes on and on and on and on. And as a result of going too hard for too long, we can get stressed out, bummed out, burned out. We get tired. We get weary. And it seems maybe that is just the nature of life. And as wonderful as it can be, nobody ever said that life is easy. Living life, I've found, as I'm sure you have too, is hard work. Nowhere did Jesus ever say that life was going to be easy, and especially when, it, when you become a Christian. Sometimes it becomes, it becomes even harder. You know, I'm reminded of a true story about a woman named Patsy Claremont who once shared the following words of wisdom with her son, Jason. She says, When he was seven, I sent him off to school one day. And just a few moments later, there was a knock at the door. I opened the door and it was Jason. Puzzles, I said, Jason, what are you doing here? You should be at the bus stop. He said, I've made up my mind, I quit school. And then I said, why have you quit school? Jason said, well, it is too long, it is too hard, and it is too boring. And then, then the mother said, well, Jason, you have just described life. Now get your tail back on the bus. <laughs> yes, life, life can be very tiresome. It can be very wearisome at times. But I believe that there is an answer. There is help. There is a strength. There is a power and a hope that comes from beyond you and me that comes from God and is readily available to us if we would just simply open ourselves up to it. So looking now at our scripture passage, the prophet Isaiah, he understood weariness, being tired, being weak, as he had experienced such things with the people of Israel as well as with the things just in his own life. Together they struggled. They struggled to be the people of God. Together they struggled to not turn their backs on their God and to bow down to the altar of false gods. Together they battled with the threat of captivity from neighboring enemy nations. 
And together they strived endlessly to become the obedient and faithful people that God called them to be and desired for them to be. Life was a struggle for them. And I'm sure the Hebrew people were tired and weary, but maybe they were wondering if there was any hope for them. Was there any hope for their future? And so, in beautiful, prophetic fashion, Isaiah asked the people of Israel, while in the midst of all of their struggles, all of their weariness, all of their tiredness, all of their weakness, and even in their hopelessness, this is what he says to them. Do you not know? I mean, seriously, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. He will not grow tired or weary. He gives strength to the weary, and He increases the power of the weak. It was just like He was saying, don't you get this? Do you, are you forgetting this or something? Do you have amnesia? He's like, I've already told you this. And then Isaiah goes on to say, youths grow tired and weary, and young men even will stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. See, this is what happened. This is what Isaiah did. Isaiah provided the much-needed words of hope and encouragement that the Hebrew people needed. Words which promised that God had not given up on them. Words which declare that God has always been with them and that they are not, nor never were, ever alone. Words which reminded them that they didn't have to struggle so much, but that God was still in the business of giving strength to the weary and power to the weak. All they had to do, all that God had asked them to do was just simply share your burdens, share your fears, Share your struggles, whatever it is. Lay it down before the throne of God and let God help you with that. Just like He always has done before. Now, with, with this in mind, I wonder what Isaiah might say to us if he were to see how hectic life is for you and for me. My bet is that Isaiah would probably ask all of us the same questions he asked the people of Israel. Do you, chapel by the sea, not know? Have you, chapel by the sea, not heard? God does not grow tired or weary. But let me remind you of something. This is good news. He gives strength to the weary and power to the weak. So, what he's saying here is the same promises of strength and power that were given to Israel has also been given to you and to me. And we all know this. We know this to be true. But our problem is, is that we act like we don't know or that we haven't heard. Like the Hebrew people, we think we can handle everything all by ourselves. I don't need, I can take care of it. We say we believe in God, and we believe in the power of, of, of God, and yet we don't act like we really believe that. And yet Isaiah still reminds us, Do you not know? Have you not heard? He will not grow tired or weary, but he gives strength to the weary and power to the weak. So that's what we're called to do today, my friends. We're called to put all of our hope, we're, put, we're called to put all of our trust and all of our faith in God by sharing with God our burdens, our problems, whatever they may be today, by connecting with God through our prayers, our worship, our faith relationship with Him. We find that the Lord imparts unto us a new strength, a greater strength, a supernatural, a divine strength. God gives us a greater sense of mobility and freedom and a power for living. In other words, we make a simple exchange with God. 
We give to God our failing strength and thus receive from God His unfailing strength. That sounds like pretty good news to me, that our God is so willing to take what tires and wearies us and at the same time is so able to give us what we need to persevere, to endure, and to have a victorious life. But you know, even more than that, God doesn't, doesn't just give us what we need, but, oh, He gives us so much more. He doesn't just give us enough strength and power just to kind of eke by. No, God gives us enough strength and power to walk, to run, and even to soar. Isaiah says, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. God will always give us more than we could even imagine. And he does it freely. You know, being a minister for so many years, I've heard this to be true time and time again. I have heard testimony after testimony of people saying to me something like this. Even people sitting here today in this sanctuary, you know what, Pastor Steve? I couldn't have made it through that difficult, painful time in my life if it hadn't been for God. Without God, another person said, I don't know what I would have done. He gave me the strength. He gave me the power. And He gave me the hope that I needed. And yet, gave me so much more when things were at their very worst. Maybe you've said these very words yourself. Maybe you too have a testimony of how God has given you strength and how He's given you the power that you needed when you found you simply couldn't do it alone. So I want to close with this. What are we going to do about it? After what we've heard, what are we going to do about it now? How are we going to respond to Isaiah's words? We all have a simple decision to make here today, today. Either we can continue to rely on ourselves and rely on our own strength, thus remaining tired and weary, or we can cast all of our burdens and cares on God and thus receive His strength and power for the faith journey which lies, his head, lies ahead. Jesus said to us, and he says it to us again today, Come to me, all of you who are weary and heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. And God's people said, and Amen.